rotary engines are superior to reciprocating engines in many ways and also better suits the requirements of an aircraft engine. So why then isn't there a rotary engine in the front of every single light aircraft today? Let's dig in and find out. To clear up any potential confusion when talking about the rotary engine, I'm referring to the Wankel rotary, not the rotary that was designed in the 1890s, which was basically a rotating radial, which was a very popular engine type around World War I. In some of my previous engine videos, I got a lot of comments recommending the rotary as ideal for light airplanes. And I wasn't surprised because on paper, the rotary possesses all the traits of the ideal light airplane engine. We won't be diving extremely deep into the internal workings of the rotary as that's been done to death. But to understand why the rotary is so great for airplanes, we first need to understand the basics of its operation. If you already know everything about how a rotary works, feel free to skip directly to this timestamp. In a reciprocating engine, the pistons move up and down in a combustion chamber and connects via con rods to a crankshaft that changes the reciprocating motion into rotating motion. The rotary engine doesn't have any reciprocating mass and instead has a rotor spinning around in a hula hoop like fashion. Similar to a reciprocating engine, the rotary engine is an internal combustion engine. Combustion happens similar to a four-stroke piston engine and it goes through an intake, compression, combustion and exhaust stage. The difference, however, is in a reciprocating engine, all four of those phases happen in the same chamber. Where in a rotary engine, each of those phases happens in a different chamber. Another big difference to the four-stroke reciprocating engine is the rotary engine doesn't need any valves. Rotary engines doesn't need to convert reciprocating motion into rotating motion as it already rotates. And this is a major efficiency and reliability advantage. And it doesn't need con rods which results in fewer moving parts and all the advantages that comes with that. And since rotary engines doesn't have valves or valve trains, again resulting in fewer moving parts, but also makes them lighter and more compact. This results in better power to weight ratio than reciprocating engines, but also takes up less overall space. Fewer moving parts also results in a less complex engine that makes them cheaper to produce. Most engineers will tell you that fewer moving parts usually results in a more reliable engine. And We'll get to that in a minute, but fewer moving parts means there are fewer parts that need to be lubricated, balanced, and fewer parts that will eventually fail. In a reciprocating engine, the moving parts are masses that has to accelerate, decelerate, stop, change direction, accelerate, decelerate, stop, and change direction thousands of times per minute, and this puts massive amounts of strain on the components. Rotary engines rotate, so it doesn't have that problem and can spin much faster with much less strain on the components. Another advantage of the rotary engine compared to the reciprocating engine is it has almost no vibration. The vibration caused by the moving parts of the engine is called primary balance. While the rotor does have a slight up and down movement as it spins, most rotary engines have two rotors, sometimes even more. This means the spinning rotors can be used to balance each other out and as a result the rotary has great primary balance. As for secondary balance, since rotary engines doesn't have any pistons and thus no con rods, they natively don't have any secondary imbalance issues. Rotary engines has another advantage in my opinion for aviation use which some might consider a disadvantage. <laughs> In the biking and motoring world, most people love high revving engines, but in aviation, especially among the older generation, so my age and up, high revving engines are hated with a passion. This obviously comes from legacy aviation engines which are low revving, and by low revving I'm talking about a max RPM of around 2700. The reason why most of the older aviation engines don't rev high is because efficient airplane propellers can't turn much faster than about 2700 RPM. Now, I don't think we should by default fear higher revving engines in aviation at all. 
But when it comes to the rotary, it's a different story. And I need you to put it out of your mind that high RPM is a bad thing. Because when it comes to the rotary, it really, really is not. The second thing that I will probably be told repeatedly in the comments is that rotary engines don't put out a lot of torque and how important torque is. No, rotary engines don't deliver a lot of torque compared to reciprocating engines, mainly due to its inherent design and the eccentric shaft. But rotary engines are high revving and will require a reduction drive to reduce propeller speed to less than a maximum of 2700 RPM. That introduces some notable advantages, the most important of which is the increased torque due to the very high gear ratio. I'm not getting into the details of propeller speed reduction units again. So if you are not sure how a redrive massively increases torque to the propeller, have a look at the dedicated video I made on the subject by clicking here. This means the inherent lack of torque of the rotary design doesn't pose any problem as an aircraft engine. So seeing as rotary engines seem so great, why are there not that many light aircraft powered by them? And are there any purpose-designed rotary engines for aviation? Well, yes, there are. One popular example is the Midwest twin rotor AE100 and AE110 producing 100 and 110 horsepower respectively at 7800 RPM from a displacement of only 588 cc. This high RPM requires it to have a 2.95 to 1 reduction ratio to slow down the propeller speed to a maximum of less than 2700 RPM. An example of a light airplane powered by the AE110 is the ARV Super 2. Midwest was bought by Diamond Aircraft and Diamond eventually stopped manufacturing the twin rotor Wankel engine, but not before powering some Diamond DA20s as well. While there are plenty of examples of rotary engines powering non-manned aircraft, there aren't many powering manned light aircraft. There are of course automobile rotaries converted for aviation, the most popular probably being the Mazda 13B. Aircraft gearbox specialist company Auto PSRUs currently supplies a complete Mazda 13B firewall forward package for the Vans RV7. Options are a normally aspirated 180 horsepower and a turbo normalized 200 horsepower rotary. Other than that, flying examples of the rotary are pretty hard to come by. But why is that? Why is such a great airplane engine design simply nowhere to be found? For one, rotary engines aren't very fuel efficient. That's a quality we could probably look past. But to make matters even worse, rotary engines have very poor emissions. In 1996, the Mazda RX-7 was discontinued in most of Europe due to new emission regulations. The same thing happened 15 years later to the RX-8. With ever-tightening emission standards, as well as research and design focus shifting to electric propulsion, there just isn't much incentive to further develop the Wankel rotary. But that's the automotive world. What about aviation for which the rotary is arguably more suited to? With recreational aviation emissions barely being a drop in the ocean that is commercial aviation emissions, light aircraft doesn't currently have such strict emission standards. But the drive for less emissions are certainly starting to hit general aviation and will eventually come for recreational aviation too. But until that happens, the rotary can still be developed for light aircraft, right? As it still has so much going for it. But unfortunately, the rotary has one more Problem. It's more problems. <laughs> in theory, the Wankel should be a very reliable engine due to its low number of moving parts and not having to convert reciprocating motion into rotating motion to turn an airplane propeller. However, even though being extremely reliable engines on paper, in reality the rotary has one major weakness due to its design. One part that are prone to failure are the rotor tips, also known as apex seals, which are constantly under huge amounts of stress. Due to this, the apex seals can wear excessively, causing reduced compression and a host of problems that comes with that. While this is a problem that could potentially be fully solved, a question one has to ask is why would companies invest in further developing the rotary when it is an engine that doesn't even meet modern emission standards, standards that are getting more strict by the year. 
yes, Master does seem to be bringing back the rotary with the new RX30, albeit only as a range extender for its electric engine. A company named Liquid Piston seems to have evolved the rotary and gotten rid of the apex seals problem. And while the engine design seems to resemble the rotary, it is definitely not a wankel. Even so, the Liquid Piston technology seems to be aimed at military and aerospace markets. And while there seems to be promise to expand to the automotive and light aircraft markets, if it will actually ever get there, remains to be seen. With emission standards seeming to be the biggest killer of the Wankel, perhaps the only hope lies in hydrogen internal combustion, for which the Wankel is extremely well suited to because of being very resistant to engine knock. However, with the battle between hydrogen and electric seemingly being won by electric, and even within hydrogen, the battle between hydrogen electric and hydrogen combustion, it seems that hydrogen electric is where most development funds are currently going to. So I'm not sure that there is any hope that the Wankel will be powering light aircraft by the masses in the future.